Yeah, we want to hear your one rules because I, I love that stuff. It's that I like learning from other people who are subject matter experts. Mm-hmm. If they can distill it down to like, could you tell me the thing that like tells you? You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. You are listening to the Barbell Logic Podcast. This is Matt Reynolds coming to you live from the Whiskey Library. Mm. I'm here with uh, my BFFs. Aww. VPs, confidants, uh, Andrew Jackson and Nikki Sims. Thank you guys for filling in for me on Monday. Mm-hmm. While You're I welcome. That was fun. Thanks for letting us do that. Yeah, celebrated that 20th anniversary with uh, the beautiful mm-hmm. Rachel Reynolds. And we, I wanted to. So I've been thinking about this. I actually thought about this while I was <laughs> in Florida. <laughs> okay. uh, I was supposed to be in Mexico for my anniversary. I don't know if you guys have heard, but uh, Mexico no longer allows uh, U.S. citizens to cross their border. They're, mm-hmm. I think they're currently building a wall to keep us out <laughs> ah, so we can't get in. So, so we had to go to Florida, gotcha. which was about as open as Missouri is, which is about 27% open. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but the beaches were open, so it was great. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And while I sat on the beach, I was thinking to myself, there are many things in my life that I have a single rule that I can, I can judge a book by its cover based on this single rule, right? Now... I want this to be a fun podcast, right? So I always know there are going to be outliers, but I'll give an example to our listeners that'll make sense. And this is the one that we haven't talked about this other than the example I'm about to give as we were eating dinner tonight. I, I said, this is one of those things. So, so I'm, I meet strangers all the time when I'm traveling and you know, they ask what I do. And then a lot of, a question that will often come up is how do I find a good gym or how do I know if right. a gym is a good gym? Mm-hmm. And my one rule about if a gym is a good gym is if the gym has chalk. If the gym provides chalk, if there's a chalk bucket in the gym, it is probably a really good gym. It doesn't mean it's the best gym in the city, but especially for like traveling or trying to find a decent gym, if the gym has chalk, the gym is going to have at least decent barbells, like not the ones with the hex nuts on the end. Mm-hmm. It's going to have decent weights. It's obviously going to have squat racks, like if it's got chalk. So my, if you could d- think about things in different industries or and you could distill it all down to a single rule, so if somebody was like, give me the elevator pitch of how do I find a good gym, my answer would be find a gym with chalk. Mm-hmm. If the gym has chalk, it's probably fine. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I started talking about to you guys and I said, so I want you to think about what some of your rules are. If do you have some of those things that you will use to judge businesses or industries or whatever uh, based on a single rule that works 99% of the time. So Nikki, do you have one that you would like to share? That oh, is, I have more than one. Oh, I know you do. Let's start with your first Let's <laughs> one. Okay. I made a list. Uh, One thing that came easily to mind was um, about shoes. I love buying a lot of shoes. I don't have a lot of like lady shoes, but I buy a lot of sneakers. Um, And my filter for that is the the sole can't be white unless the whole shoe is white. So like the shoes that I'm currently wearing. Yeah, the ones that you're wearing. Which is all white, white on white, white laces. There's not an ounce of color on the shoe other than white. Yeah. And the sole is white. So I passed the Nikki test for my sneakers. Yeah. But I think like a gum sole or like I have a hot pink sole shoe, but it like makes it more special. And like also it's not going to look really dirty over time. Yeah. So, yeah, the sole shouldn't be white unless the whole shoe is white. They make a lot of high end guys shoes like this, like this classic style tennis shoe that are they'll come in like black or like dark brown and they have mm. white soles. Yeah, it's such a disruption. I'm not nope. I'm like it's nope, di- not buying that. That's yeah. interesting yeah. because I have a pair of shoes <laughs> right over there. Well, there's also a trash can right over there. <laughs> <laughs> we were discussing Andrew was listening to the uh the podcast on style on the way here. And he was like I need to I need to do some work. Yeah, I need so, to go on the fashion LP. <laughs> we're actually going to take you guys to uh we've got a great barber shop here in town called Hudson Hawk. Mm-hmm. Shout out to my boy TJ. Mm-hmm. Uh it's and we're going to take you guys and have your have your hair did. I'm much so excited. Needed. <laughs> I, I've not had a professional haircut since February. 
that's. I don't that's think a long, I've yeah. had one in probably two and a half years. Wow. <laughs> Maybe okay. actually three years. What's funny is, yeah. is I don't have hair, <laughs> and I get a professional hair. haircut at least once every couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> Because I like that straight razor shave. I want some hot. I, I like the hot towels, right? Mm. My hair. As a matter of so fact, that would be a great. I was gonna say that's a great one for a yeah. barber shop. If a barber shop does either, you could either use if they do straight razor shaves, mm-hmm. or if they do, or if they have hot towels, mm-hmm. you know, and they usually have both. That's a good barber shop. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good barber shop. Yeah, that makes so, me think of when I'm looking for a place to get like bikini waxes. If they also do pedicures, no. right? No. That's the, that's the one rule right. not to do. That's the one rule to yeah, when I get there. when I get a bikini wax, I specifically like I want to go to a place that specializes specifically in yeah. Brazilian bikini, bikini waxes. waxes. Like yeah. I'm not really interested in. If they do anything else, like um, like, like tire a drim- rotations, a Dremel ro- a like- Dremel tool on the back of your heels, <laughs> yeah, no. which I love, by the way. In fact, so <laughs> so I have a rule about about bars. Okay, mm. if you go to a bar, as much as I travel, uh. If I'm in a new bar, I will almost always order either a Sazerac or Negroni first. Mm, mm -hmm. If a bar knows how to make a Sazerac or Negroni, which are the two oldest cocktails, the two most classic cocktails, and like there's, you know, they don't bat an eye. And they're like, yep, no problem, you know. Or they say, what kind of gin do you want in it? The Negroni or, you know, or... Or if, or if you're asking for a Sazerac, like, you know, what kind of whiskey you want, rye whiskey, what kind, then that's a great bar. But if they have to go... Wait, can you remind me what's in a Sazerac again? Yeah. Or if they have to go get the bartender book and open it up, mm. that's a shitty bar. I don't so, like bars that will give you a cocktail with a bunch of little ice cubes. Like if you serve me an old fashioned with a bunch of little ice cubes, that's a great unacceptable. That's right. Mm. It has to be a giant ice cube. Yes. And yes. So then, what do you do? do you, uh, if they fail the rule, you leave. No, or I you just, just make I a change, mental note. I change the order. So if if they fail the rule, then what I order is I'll order so so my go-to crappy drink at a crappy sports bar mm-hmm. is usually they almost all have maker's mark which is not a great whiskey at all right but it's a weeded whiskey and it's decent and all and the price is good and sometimes I'll even order a maker's mark uh old fashioned hmm. and I'll say no soda water now yeah. the interesting thing about we'll that is terrible is that an old it. fashioned doesn't have soda water in it Yeah. but when you go to a crappy bar <laughs> they, they will always put a splash of soda in it to fill up the cup and I'm like uh... no here's what here's what goes in there <laughs> put the bitters in there put the whiskey in there and if you want to put a cherry or a or an edge, uh, uh, a a piece of the the, the orange peel. peel, then that's fine too. But don't muddle that. Che- I don't want the cherry. No, a muddled in it. maraschino cherry. Oh nope. God. Nope. Not no, interested. Thanks. So Not it interested. doesn't necessarily change your uh, decision, but it might change your game plan. Like you're gonna go. You're still gonna stay at that bar. Yeah, but yeah. it changes. Or at your... least have a drink. I mean, because then I, I, I mean, it would be very rude to ask for a drink. And they're like, <laughs> we can't make Sazerac. I'm like, sorry, then I'm not going to drink here, and I'm going to walk out. <laughs> I am, like, I, I am it just lets me know what I'm dealing with, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Okay. Another, another good one at a bar. If you go to a bar and you just look, and they have fresh herbs on the bar, mm-hmm. like if they have basil and they have thyme, and they've got, and they're and they're like in a, they're like in a little flower pot growing, mm-hmm. then that's probably Ooh, that's a good high bar. class. Yeah. It's okay, Andrew, what's one of yours? So when I was traveling uh, overseas, particularly in Asia, the one rule for street cart food was that if it had a line, that was the, that was the cart you yeah, wanted to go sense. eat at. Okay. Yeah. If there's no line, it's just a Even cart. if it looks amazing, Do smells not amazing. eat there. Yeah. No you, and you want it to be a line of local right, right, right. folks that are eating there. Like that's their daily breakfast, lunch, or dinner, yeah. or whatever. That, mm-hmm. that was definitely a, a one rule for sure. That's okay, a good rule. That's pretty good. I am a uh, I'm a pizza snob. Ooh, yeah. What's your pizza rule? You and I have had some great pizza over uh, the years, yeah. right? Like some like mm-hmm. Long Island pizza. And that's part oh, of the problem is so good. You know, in we we just had a great dinner. We have great food in Missouri. What we don't have is great seafood because it's Missouri and it's about far away. From, you can get good sushi. There's something about sushi they'll fly in. You know, they'll fly it in fresh. But good seafood you can't really get here, and you can't get great pizza here, especially mm. compared to like legit yeah, Long Island that's pizza. Very special. My rule with pizza is is if they use fresh basil or fresh arugula on the pizza, it's a good pizza. So and again, with so it's mm-hmm. shout out to our waiter, our waiter, one of my favorite waiters in town, my favorite waiter in town, Jacob at, at Progress. He said his one rule. We were talking to him about this, and we didn't want to give much away. He said, 
if he can order a, a classic, the classic, whatever it is. So at a pizza place, if you can order a margarita pizza, which is like the most classic sort of Italian, basic, mm -hmm. wonderful pizza, and they know exactly how to make a margarita pizza, which, by the way, has fresh basil on it, not Ugh. pesto, yeah. not cooked basil. Mm -hmm. It's cooked, and then the fresh basil leaves are put on the pizza at the end. Right. Or, you know, or they have a pizza that they make like prosciutto and fig jam, and then they put fresh arugula on it. Mm -hmm. Like fresh arugula, fresh basil, fresh greens on a pizza. The pizza place is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good one rule, right? Yeah. Yeah. And most places, in, as a matter of fact, in Springfield, Missouri, we only have two places in the entire city that will put fresh fresh herbs on your pizza. I have a burger one. Okay. But the tough thing about this one is you don't know until you're actually eating it. Mm. And that's if you're eating the bun and, or if you're eating the burger and the bun falls apart. Uh -huh. Because that means they did not consider what it's like to actually eat the burger. Right. Like they just picked shitty bread. Right. Picked not very good bread. And then it just makes the whole experience not very great. So the bun has to stay intact while you're eating it. We had a burger tonight that we ordered as an appetizer to mm -hmm. the dinner. So we went to this, <laughs> went to kind of like, a, again, at Springfield, Missouri, we went to a trendy restaurant in Springfield, Missouri, and Nikki wanted the burger. And I was really like, really badly. And I was like, the burger for what? I was like, we're getting, and we, what we kind of did was, I know this is going to shock and, a lot of people in the age of COVID, we ordered a bunch of different dishes and then we all just shared off the same plate because I don't know if you guys know, but Nikki and Andrew can't get COVID from me because the only thing they can get from me is the antibodies. And so I've tried to give them as many of uh, my antibodies as I can on this trip. <laughs> no, mm, so anyways, so sweat she, she off was, your head. But one of the wonderful things about the burger tonight was that they made, it was clear they had made every single ingredient mm, on the burger. Like They oh, had made so the buns. They had made the pickles, mm -hmm. and that—that's another one. Like a like pickles oh, in a yeah. restaurant. If, if they've um, made their own pickles, oh, that's big. That's, that's a big major. deal. That's a good one rule oh, for like yeah. a diner, or like oh, even yeah. like a step up from a diner. You know, kind of burger type food. Yeah, you've got legit pickles that you made and doesn't mm -hmm. come out of a that. A that shows me that you jar. really care. That's right. Yeah, I have one another gym one. Okay, it's so yours is sort of like, in my opinion, like the minimum standard. Like sure. if chalk, if they've got chalk. That's you, probably a place you can, you can get the job done. You can get the job done. You can train because there's a lot of CrossFit gyms out there and, you know, hole in the wall places that, you know, they've got chalk, but you probably wouldn't want to train there if you were in the area sure. regularly. But if you go into a gym and it has stall bars, that it is, has stall bars. Yes. What are stall bars? I don't even know these what that are, is. These are the gymnastics oh. uh, bars that are mounted up against the wall. They just look That's like wood dowels. It's going to be some like frou frou hippie gym. No, this is going to be like a next level. They know what's going on. <laughs> it's like a, the Bulgarian training hall. It's, or it's something. like a training hall. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I get it. So okay. If you, go, okay. if you walk into a gym and it's got stall bars, <laughs> it's legit. It's legit. Okay. Yeah. It's funny. For weightlifting, at least. Okay. So I've got, I've got a couple that I want to, I want to, tell you what the category is and see if you can guess Ooh, yes. what my one rule is rather okay. than me telling you the one rule okay. first. Okay. So I have one for Mexican restaurants. Oh, free chips and salsa. No, every Mexican restaurant has free chips and salsa. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been to a Mexican restaurant that doesn't have free chips and salsa? I mean, occasionally, but like... Yeah, that's how you know you shouldn't be going there is if you don't get free chips and salsa. No, there's definitely... I have a, I have a rule that will tell you... I mean, listen. Karaoke. Every... <laughs> Well, karaoke <laughs> tells you it's a bad Mexican restaurant. <laughs> How do you know it's a great Mexican restaurant uh, with one question? Oh, do you make your tortillas? Do you make your own tortillas? Yeah. Uh, Ding, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. Did you, do you make mm -hmm. your tortillas? Mm -hmm. So remember the Mexican restaurant by Cody's out in at the strength parlor? We didn't go St. to that Louis. one last time we were there, huh? Oh, my God. That place That's is right. so ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, why didn't we do that? I don't know. What were we thinking? Oh, so they have a really good... Margaritas and then you can tell too. they've like made the they've made it with like the tortillas are made with like masa and actual oh, lard. Lard, yeah. Mm. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> New Mexico girl checking in. Yes. Okay, I have some that are about men. Uh oh. So is this gonna be <laughs> things that make a guy great or an instant rule out? Um so some of these are an instant rule out from like dating apps, and then some are like during the initial conversations that they're they would also be ruled, be ruled out. out. These, are ne these are negatives. Yeah. Okay. Let's start with the dating app things. Um, if they have selfies that have the animal filters, 
Oh Can my you God. believe that guys actually put that? Wait, like it puts like a the face Snapchat, like the Snapchat. Yeah, it, and it gives them like ears dog ears or whatever. And stuff. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. That's the first thing? off. That's that, a, yeah. that should be an instant rule out for anyone who's yeah. under the age of sixteen. <laughs> so bad. You can use that if you're fifteen <laughs> so or below. Wow. And mm. then I actually don't want to see gym pics. Yeah. Would love to date a guy who lifts, but I do not want to see them taking selfies. But let's talk about why. Why is that? Because it's usually not of them doing anything cool. Uh, <laughs> what if they're because you know, he's a guaranteed narcissist? Yeah. If you post pictures of himself in the gym, which is funny because I just post all videos all day long of me lifting. Right. But and I do bet you, you don't do you have, have any of them on your dating apps, do you? I have a video of me doing a deadlift. Okay. Because I want someone to know what I'm about. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. So, is there a certain like crossover point where it would be an appropriate gym picture? Like, what if they're deadlifting? You know what? If they're at the top of a deadlift PR. That would be pretty neat. That'd be okay. That'd be pretty... I'd be like, okay, cool. Or if they're like cool. a strong man and they're like picking a car up. But yeah, you're, you're but if they're like, like with shirtless. workout gloves, like uh, yeah, casually yeah. resting on the Smith with machine the bar, like, a like top. trying to sneakily take a <laughs> selfie. <laughs> the Jersey Shore tank top. Yeah, no. Yeah, no yeah. dice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, another one would be if they have a goatee. Oh, oh no. Interesting. Yes. Absolutely not. Perfectly acceptable, by the way, in 1994. Yeah. Well, and... <laughs> You know, or if you're Mac McGregor. <laughs> oh, yeah. He you know, actually he, can pull I off. I think pulls off the goatee quite well. Do you yeah. think that's cultural, though? Like, the, there's something about a goatee. Is a, I, I don't know this, and someone will, someone will write in. Mm-hmm. The goatee seems like a like the history of the goatee is probably Scottish. Gosh, mm. I wonder. Doesn't it seem like that's a, <laughs> that's a Scotch way of facial hair? So, so Mac is one of our coaches. Mm-hmm. Great guy wonderful to listen to. We'll have him on the podcast at some oh, point. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I might just have him on to like read children's books or right. something sure. because it's just like his voice is amazing. <laughs> he does have a great goatee, but there's something about the fact that because he's a Scotsman... It works. It doesn't... You don't yeah. look at the goatee. You just you don't notice see it. his face. Exactly. Versus yeah. it's other like guys with goatees just like, look how thin pointy my goatee is. And I'm just <laughs> like... Ugh. How about... So on, on that same note, guys that have a beard but shave the mustache, there's no mustache at all. <laughs> Just a neck beard. I'm so well, are not they even neck beard. Like they've got the full me, beard, like, but they just right. It's like they, or it's like they're so uncomfortable with the fact that there is a mustache. It's incredibly thin, so they they like trim the mustache down to like you know an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch, and they've got a big full beard everywhere else, and they're just they oh, just won't do the mustache. And I'm like, oh, guys, that's gosh. not. Well, that's another thing is when a guy is clearly so proud of his beard that that's all he wants to show off. Mm. I don't like it when it's just. Like, do you like it's they're just about their beard. It's like, so it's I really like hope a, there's more to you than your beard. It's like when a girl mm-hmm. takes a selfie and she always makes sure her cleavage is in the bottom of the yeah. selfie. <laughs> the guy's version of that is he always makes sure he gets the full extent of his beard yeah. in the selfie. It's just like the so right it's like, look okay. at my face, and you're like, all I can see are, are is your cleavage down there. <laughs> You clearly got that. They cut off like the top three inches of their head, but make sure all their cleavage gets in the picture. Like what Guys else with are you bringing will do to the, the same. <laughs> Cuts off at the eyebrows, but they get all the beard in the picture. Do you want to hear about what I don't like if I learn more about them? Sure. Sure. So I'll usually ask them what kind of cocktails they like to drink and stuff. That's a great question. Yeah. And they'll, you can if instantly they judge say, someone. oh, you know, I really like Jack Daniels. Done. Uh, bye. Jack Daniels or vodka mm. is an out. Yeah. <laughs> I drank Jack Daniels on an airplane like two days ago because it was the only whiskey on the airplane. And it's really that bad. It's so it's bad. It's awful. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I thought to myself, like, it's really, it's still basically bourbon. It's not obviously bourbon, mm-hmm. but it's, it's not, it's not fake bourbon like Southern Comfort is. It's not bourbon flavored vodka like southern comfort Oof. it's basically Jeez. bourbon yeah you know it tastes terrible it's so bad it tastes terrible that and jameson like if they say jameson I'm like just... or jaeger because that just means that they like to go to a bar and do shots that's right they and just i'm just go get not hammered into that. and then like take gotcha. somebody home yeah yeah no thanks what if they show up and i would assume at this point most of the guys that you are going to go on a date with are over the age of 30 they're not oh, under absolutely. the age of 30. Yeah. And there is any amount of bling on the back of their jeans, on their jeans pockets. <laughs> to me, that's always one. Like, if there's any bling on your jeans, if there's any special stitching on the back pocket, oh, Lord. and you are over the age of the, of 30, like, you're a, ba- you're a bad human. It's just, it's the way it has to wow. be. 
Mm. Like, no, I do not want to get in your Honda Civic. That has a spoiler on it. <laughs> <laughs> and neon lights underneath. <laughs> That's awesome. You have more? Uh, open my last conversation? one my last one is if like I've gotten to the point where I met them and I find out that they have a mattress on the floor that they sleep <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. Like I went through this moment. I like looked back at all like the not so great guys that I dated and they all had a mattress on the floor. None of them had so purchased terrible. an actual bed frame. Uh, and it's like you can get a thirty five dollar bed frame. That's right. That's and so right. I was like, Nope, gotta rule that out. That's an instant <laughs> That's a <laughs> mm, who would ever do that? <laughs> who would ever do that? I mean, I like to understand that. people going through things, but also get a mattress frame. <laughs> it's on order. It's on order. <laughs> I okay, that's all my men stuff. Mattress <laughs> frame now on the floor. We love there is uh, a frame on order. We love coffee. Mm-hmm. Coffee's tough, and it's kind of tough to kind of get a handle on. And I definitely my coffee is tough. Well, I just mean hmm. my palate is not as refined for coffee, oh, okay. as it is for say whiskey. I and see. but I enjoy it, and I want to drink good. I I can I can clearly distinguish between good tasting coffee and Folgers mm. or burnt coffee or diner coffee or you know whatever. Right. And so, um, but again, when I travel and I go to a, a coffee shop, there are. There are several different questions that you can ask there. Like there are certain drinks. Like there's a, it, it, some of this would, this would be like what you talked about. Like what's the minimum versus like yeah. what makes. So for example, like if you want, if you want to know if it's a badass coffee shop, mm-hmm. if you if you order a cortado and they <laughs> yeah. make you one, yeah. that place knows what the hell they're doing. And if it takes seven minutes to make and costs seven dollars, that's exactly right. That's, yes, <laughs> but you know it's one of those deals. Like if they know what a cortado is. But but my bigger one a lot of times that I'll use because cortado is also kind of a pretentious drink to to order. It's not my primary <laughs> drink I would order. Is I ask them about. I say, do you have any coffees that are natural process? Mm. So and what that is is like there's only a couple different ways to process coffee beans. There's like the washed and there's honey process and natural process. And I think it makes a big difference in the way the bean ferments. And so again, it doesn't matter which one you like or even or even if you know if you know the difference. But a coffee place should know. Mm. So if they're like, oh, and I guess some of that also comes down to the fact that do they roast their own coffee? I went to a place the other day who, which is, it's got a reputation for being a very pretentious <laughs> high end. As a matter of fact, I went in there and I saw two CrossFit Games <laughs> athletes, like oh, individual. Man. I'll tell you off who, off air who it was, but but big time CrossFit Games <laughs> athletes, and they were in here, you know, drinking coffee at this coffee shop. And this coffee shop was a very like uppity sort of coffee shop. And they buy uppity coffee from an uppity coffee roaster, <laughs> oh but they God. don't roast their own coffee. Uh, I imagine that there is a coffee podcast going on right now. And they're saying, what is the one question that someone comes in and asks you if they want you to think that they know anything about coffee? Yeah, but they're actually a douchebag. <laughs> and it would be like, is <laughs> your coffee Do you have natural process? Right, right. right. This would be top of the list. Like, how do we know if... If they're a giant douchebag, right. yeah. they ask about like, the process. They of think the they know they clearly about can't coffee. Taste the difference, but they want you. You to actually can think. taste the difference. <laughs> in um, yeah, I don't. So, Andrew, what's another one of yours? Uh, well, one that I picked up from years of running factories is that the a rule for just cleanliness in, when you go into any workspace or or home is the floors. The cleanliness of the floors uh, and whether or not there are, uh, you know, debris or foreign objects. Oh, man. Uh, you are. Wow. Of debris, fod <laughs> on the floor. Well, if, that, you, if you think about it, if the you atten- go what it is, is a tell of attention to detail. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. So that's it's a one rule of if you don't clean your floors... What else are you letting slip? That's right. Gosh, I need to go home and clean my floor well, you immediately. Can, you can go by, like, if somebody's coming over to the house in six minutes, mm-hmm. you can run through your house and pick up all the crap and throw mm-hmm. it in a closet or whatever, but you can't clean your floors you that fast. Floors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if your floors are gross, Oof. then that's, that's, yeah. That's tough. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, and it, it, it reveals a depth of other potential right. things. That's what you can always walk quickly through any space and tell. Where to go look further. Mm. That's interesting. Mm. Mm. What about, I was thinking about in our industry, could you, and I don't know that I have a great answer for this, but is there for for clients who are looking for a coach, are, are, is there a single question or maybe just one or two questions that they could ask 
their prospective coach that would quickly identify if the coach has any idea what the hell they're talking about. How much you bench? <laughs> that is Clearly. not a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the right question. Oh, man. Hmm. Tough, because right? The client's going to ask something that is going to make the client feel special. You know, like, just imagine if you went into even what you felt like were one of these gyms we were talking about that had a little bit, had some chalk in it or had Andrew's pull-up bars mounted to the wall, <laughs> whatever. Stall bars. So, yes. stall bars, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and you're like, I wonder if the coaches here know what the hell they're talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. What what could you ask them? I mean, I guess you could pull out, you know, you could you could ask about some personalities, about like, you know, do you, like, what do you think about Louis Simmons or something like, like that could be a, a question, but oh. like, that doesn't really tell you if they know how to oh, coach, you right? Watch, you, know you watch the lifters. That's what I do. Yeah, that's actually... You watch lifters. How are the people in that space training? Yeah, that's a good question. That's I think good. I would want to know, I would ask them, what does your, what do you do on your first session? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Because maybe they do an FMS. That's true. I've also that's been a in a gym where they teach the low bar squat first by teaching them how to pull a PVC down onto their back. Right. Like what? <laughs> like right. a, an imaginary lat pull down. Right. So even a question like, do you low bar squat here is not really a question that answers that because yeah. I might say yes. And what they mean is, is we're going to teach you how to pull a PVC pipe into a low bar position. Yeah. <laughs> and like, well, that's not actually what we do. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, it, so you would ask yeah. what, what, what do you do on if your first I joined session? here and I hired you as my coach or my trainer, what would we do in our first session? Yeah. That's a great, yeah, that's a great question. And what should they do in the first session? Watch them lift. <laughs> well, I know, but like what kind of lifts, right? So, I mean, should, with, yeah, I get, yeah. you know, so they, they would say squat. like, hey, we're going to focus on the basics, right? Yeah. We're going to come in and we're going to. And they should immediately lift. Right. That's one tell. Yeah, that's, like, that's exactly You right. need to go to the barbell. Right. And you need to squat. Not, hey, we're going to evaluate your gait yeah. and your overhead squat. And yeah. we're going to see what your overhead squat We're going to warm you up like, with or... some reverse hypers. And then I think we're going right. to you know, activate your glutes with some mm. hip circles. Yeah, I'd just be looking at their floors. Do they have stall bars? <laughs> and and what Do all they make the, their own tortillas? What are all the <laughs> And was like, what's your floor cleaning regimen? Also, <laughs> don't they have style of biblioteca? <laughs> <laughs> and if they point upstairs. Then. That's where we are right now, PT dubs in the whiskey biblioteca. <laughs> that's, that's no, but I mean, I, all seriousness, I would probably just have a casual offhand conversation and watch what was going on in the gym. Yeah, that's, yeah. That is yeah. that's good. what's really yeah. like that's the real tell for what is yeah. going yeah. on at the gym. You know, I remember um I remember going and training at the Olympic Training Center in Seoul, South mm. Korea several years ago. Mm. I was there with my buddy uh Steve Galvin and we were we were he he was an Olympic weightlifter and I was a I was a, a better power lifter then than I am now for sure. And, uh, and he was doing some snatches and then ended up doing some deadlifts and I was deadlifting and there were, I mean, it was just a training hall. It was basically, it, w yep. it was like, it was a room that was basically twice the size of a basketball course. It was like two basketball courts. And I bet you they had stall bars there. Yeah, they had stall bars. As a matter of <laughs> fact, I was just thinking to myself when you said <laughs> that, the rule. last time I've seen stall bars was at the Olympic Training Center in oh Seoul, God, South that's Korea. Amazing. <laughs> that's, the last, that's the last time. I rest my case. <laughs> but, uh. I so then the team came in and they started doing snatches. They were doing um, they were actually doing like hanging snatches uh, with straps. So they'd strap and they'd pull it, pick it up to the hang, and they'd go down to kind of the jump position and pop and jump. But they had a they had a guy on <laughs> That's each some Olympic lifting lingo right there. They had a Clearly. they had a guy on each platform. They had a guy that on should each be platform. a one rule for <laughs> somebody who does not know. Uh, well, you're gonna bring it down. And you're gonna pop and you're gonna jump. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> You so I can remember like the the <laughs> atmosphere in that gym was that there there were there were probably ten platforms in a row on one side and mm -hmm. there were ten platforms in a row on the other side. So like yep. twenty platforms. Beautiful. And I and and Galvin and I are on the far corner of one of this row of ten, and it started filling up with the team. And they started and this the guy that was across from me would hit a snatch, and then within. 10 or 15 seconds, the guy next to him would do his snatch, and then the guy next to him would do his snatch, and the guy oh, next to him. So cool. And then while while the next guy, each guy was getting ready for the snatch, the guys that had previously snatched were loading on the next plates on mm -hmm. their bar, and then they sat in a folding chair, and yep. they watched each yep. other lift. Yep. And the coach sat in the in the 
middle of like behind both rows and shouted stuff, which I think was coaching, but I don't actually know because he was trying. <laughs> I assume he was watching the lifters and yeah. he was he was coaching, and uh, it was cool. So then what we would do is we would try to time it so that when so it would go around the room, and then when it kind of got to my platform, it was like it's my turn. But they didn't wait on me. Then they just went to they just yeah. passed me and passed Calvin, and the next guy would go. Eventually, I got my deadlift heavy enough that by the last set uh. or two. They like let me work in, and <laughs> they I think they figured out what I was doing. Yeah. They were really cute, but it was it was it was a blast. It was actually that's probably the most badass gym I've ever trained in my life. Yeah, we would, I bet. We would used to do a version of that, uh, where a coach would have us go around the room, and we had to all make in order to get credit for the round, and we would do that. It, it would be at something like an 85 percent, yeah, and. Uh, We'd have to get a, a ten completed rounds. Oh man! Oh, man. And, uh, so if somebody missed, sometimes you're, like, you'd be doing that the for other, 25, yeah. 30 rounds. Yeah, because <laughs> one guy or two guys missed or yeah. whatever. Yeah, but yeah. it created a it created that kind of sense of being on the platform yeah. in a competition. Yeah, it's really and you have to it, perform while everybody else is in there yeah. watching. And yeah. yeah, it's a cool training. Uh, high, high pressure stuff. Energy. So. I have a. What do you think is a good rule for a hotel? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, if they have a bar is mm. one, mm -hmm. you know, if you go to your standard like Holiday Inn or Marriott or whatever, they don't have a bar. They've got free breakfast, mm -hmm. which is not a place that I probably want to stay Powdered at. eggs. Not, not so Powdered great. Powdered eggs. Yeah. yeah I was going to say with like some, like the breakfast bar yeah. is a pretty good tell, like whatever the quality of that. Well, yeah. if I'd say, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I've stayed at many hotels over the years with a free breakfast. Sure. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. even mostly and to I've this day when breakfast. I take my family somewhere, we go stay somewhere <laughs> at a Holiday Inn Express with a free breakfast. Absolutely. But, but if you're at a hotel with a free breakfast, it probably is not a great hotel. I think <laughs> if they have white duvet covers, that says a lot about the hotel. Mm. Uh, that is, that's a great one. But if it's like some pattern plasticky mm -hmm. bedspread, yeah. no. White duvet covers, that's white probably going to be pretty says, good. Yeah. 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 See, yeah, I think the free breakfast is, you know, is not a binary thing. I think that's actually the tell, like the quality of that free breakfast. Really? Yeah, you can get, I've been stated some nice uh, free <laughs> breakfast. Hotels. Like where? Clearly <laughs> talking to two neat dads right now. <laughs> I was, I, like San Diego Radisson Inn, I think. You okay, know. had a free breakfast and was delicious. Yep, and I had like egg whites, like a nice, hmm. like uh, egg burrito bar, kind of okay. like build it was your free. own. Yeah, okay. yeah, it was great. <laughs> Speaking of neat dad, mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, like if you want to, if you want to eat good barbecue on a Saturday, and the guy's not wearing white New Balance that's <laughs> making the barbecue, <laughs> that's your one rule. Mm. Um, you should be wearing white New Balance. What's like the one tell of if like a lawn is like a good mm. lawn? If it's edged. Uh huh. Yeah. So for me, it's edging, and it's it's. I mean, yeah. Edging. Yep. Me right? too. Neat dad. <laughs> <laughs> love I'm, the edge. I'm into that I love too. just walking that edge that and too. just going right to the edge. I mm -hmm. feel like I'm in a really good control position. Of, <laughs> of what edging. are we talking about? Yeah. Edging. <laughs> <laughs> Lawns. I don't know. What else? Anything else? I have one more okay. for the 12 women who listen to this. Okay. Uh, uh, for picking out workout pants. Oh. Okay. So if you have to convince yourself to not buy them, Mm -hmm. then you should probably get them. Okay. But if you have to convince yourself to buy them, uh, then you should not, not buy them. Does that does that mm -hmm. apply only to workout pants or is that kind of a generally good shopping uh, rule? That actually probably is a good mm -hmm. shopping rule. But okay. the answer isn't always going to be that you should buy them. But with workout <laughs> okay. pants, generally it's you should buy them. Okay, I got you. There's something <laughs> special. Funny. Uh, I've got one for uh, traveling. Okay. Mm -hmm. If the gas station or a place of restroom that you're stopping at mm. has a key. Ooh. Like yes. with the dangly Oof. thing. Right. Not probably good. in first. Not good. Man. Not good. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> What's the, what was the guy in Dumb and Dumber when he, what, uh, what was the guy that with the trucker hat that he was like, you know, meet, his name was like Catfish or something. Remember? And he was <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Jim yeah. Carrey gets stuck in the, he was like, for a good time, meet Catfish here at Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. And yeah. he just happened to be in the stall. He right looked at his at watch. It's like two, <laughs> He's like, oh god, and then Catfish like breaks open the door. Yeah, he thinks he's in there to have a good time. To have a good time. <laughs> so, I think no, I think that's good. I think that so. Yeah. 
So here's what we want to know. I want to know from our listeners. Mm-hmm. I know there's some that we've missed. For sure. What are your one rules about various topics by emailing questions at barbell-logic.com and put in the subject line one rule. And yeah. We'll collect those and we'll post mm. them on our social media. Perfect. So also if you think that we are like way off base on one of these, right? Because I know there's gonna be like somebody's listening to this and they own a pizza place <laughs> and they put pesto on their margarita pizza instead of using like real basil. It's probably delicious. And they're gonna yell at me. You know what? Send us like, a pizza, we'll so, decide. That's right. That's right. Send us a pizza and we'll be like Davy Page views and we'll uh, we'll do a little bar stool pizza review and we'll tell you how good your pizza is live on uh, on the air. But uh yeah, we want to hear your one rules because I I love that stuff. It's the, I like learning from other people who are subject matter experts. Mm-hmm. If they can distill it down to like, could you tell me the thing that like tells you? Yeah. Like I'd like to know what makes a great dentist or something. Like I yeah. don't know what makes a good dentist. I walk into a dental place and they're like, oh, you have 18 cavities and it's $3,700. And I'm like, wait a minute. I brush and floss my teeth twice to three times a day and have no pain in my mouth. Yeah. I, how do I even know if have yeah. you ever have you ever had a cavity and you're like, I'm not uh, really sure if I have it. <laughs> how would you even know if you had a cavity? Ooh, like, can someone tell me the one rule for picking out health insurance? That'd be good. Yeah, I'd love to know about that. That'd be that'd be good. Yeah. So I'd like yeah some good good one rules. We're looking at we're looking at 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 cars. Like I'm not looking at buying a new car. We're frugal, so we're you know looking at buying a. Uh, another SUV for the family. The one, the current one has, I don't know, 140,000 miles on it. And I look at consumer reports, which does a pretty good, but like, I don't know that they're exactly what I'm looking for, for like, how do you know what like is really going to be a good, reliable yeah. car? And is going like, to like, if it has you... seat warmers, that's the only thing that matters. Seat warmers. And coolers. There you go. So <laughs> the thing I love best, you my car me, has it. What do you love best about your Toyota Tundra Ooh. is that my seat Tundra cooler. has seat coolers. It's like sitting on an air hockey table. Sounds There's, well. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's on an air hockey table. You're like, ooh. I just slide around on that seat. It's cold air all the time. That I'm sounds just, miserable. I just hover, Put on the warmer. I just hover the whole time. I guarantee you that the warmer has never been turned on on my seat when wow. I'm driving. So as a matter of fact, most of the time, in our car, the the air conditioning is, you know, we've got the dual. Mm-hmm. And so it's all the way low and the seat cooler is on me and directly in my face. And my wife who sits next to me has the heater all the way on and the seat warmer all the way up <laughs> in her seat. And we've got this weird thing going on between us. So mm-hmm. And our kids another- are like, our kids are in the back seat and they're like, I feel like there's a tornado going on. <laughs> What's going on? Could someone also uh, shed some light on the one tell or rule for picking out a new mattress? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's. I good. need a new mattress, so just tell me what you, you know. Look the for. interesting thing about mattresses are like how much the Chinese market has changed that over the last few years. Because, like, when I was when we first got married twenty years ago, mattresses were like four thousand dollars. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I remember thinking to myself, like, I'll never, I'll never be able to buy a mattress my whole life. Right, mm-hmm. and then over the last decade, memory foam mattresses. So we, you know, we got memory foam mattress, and now you can get them. They ship. I think most of them are actually from China. You can get them on Amazon. They have great ratings. Mm -hmm. And a California king size, you know, it's got 27,000 five-star ratings on Amazon is $300. It's amazing. I'm like, what? This is ridiculous. So, yeah, that's... And even if I have to replace it every... So that actually is really good information. Maybe I don't need to spend $2,000 on a mattress. No, no. 300 might be a bit of a Reynolds exaggeration. No, it's not. It's not. No, they are really cheap. 300 300 bucks. Yeah. Wow. I have that's a queen size are. in my guest room and it was like 250 Yeah, hmm. that's what's actually yeah. once we got this one, we ended up buying the same brand. Mm-hmm. And I think we got, no, I'm trying to remember. I wish I could remember the brand because I, I, mean, I don't have any, not sponsored by them. But anyway, so we, mm. we, uh, we bought them for every bed in the house. Like every wow. bed has the same, yeah, they're really has nice. the same mattress from, so got them shipped in. Yeah, that's a good one. There's, there's, I thought about that stuff before. Like we need to, somebody needs to write a book of the best things, the mm-hmm. book of one rules. I think that's <laughs> and it's called <laughs> Consumer Reports. Is it called Consumer Reports? Is that what it is? And they're like, if they make their own it's tortillas like at Mexican restaurants, that's things. how you know it's good. <laughs> so I, another good one at, at Mexican restaurants is if they have Mezcal. Oh, if you yeah. Ask me, you may, weren't you with me? The, you you might have been there too, but Nikki was definitely there. The time I was like, hey, I was trying to order tequila. Oh, boy. And I was like, this do you have any mess. Añejo tequila? 
any tequila that's brown. And he was like, tequila brown. He was like, huh? And he had no idea. And he didn't speak a lot of English, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't really the language barrier. It was the lack of knowledge in the tequila Tequila. world Mm -hmm. at this restaurant. He was like, I will bring you the best, you the best tequila. And there was tequila and it's, Terrible. Looks like vodka. It's as white, it's clear yeah. and white mm-hmm. as it can possibly be. And I was like, it was no, no, probably no, Jameson. You're, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like you are not. You're not understanding. I like making one of my favorite cocktails right now. If I go to a Mexican <laughs> restaurant, it's the mezcal margarita. Oh yeah, you just pick out That's the top delicious. shelf margarita mm-hmm. and you say, "Hey, make me that," but instead of using tequila, make it with mezcal. Mm-hmm. Delicious, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. golden. I don't know. Okay. I think that's it. You guys got any more? I got all mine out. I'm, I'm, I'm actually interested to hear more from our listeners. Yeah, yeah me too. So send us your one rules. Tag us on Instagram. Yeah, yeah tag us on Instagram. Mm-hmm. We'll repost. We'll talk about it. Let's get a conversation going. Hashtag you can go to, one rule fool. <laughs> hashtag one rule fool. There we go. So number one, yeah. one rule fool. <laughs> and you can tag Barbell Logic yeah. or Reynolds take, Strong. Take a picture of your floor. Tag me. That's right. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew Barbender. Andrew Barbender. Mm-hmm. Or very nice. Please don't take a picture of your, your goatee and tag me. <laughs> oh, awesome. Wait, so you should. Here's what I want. I need you to flood Nikki's DMs <laughs> with all of your selfies uh, with goatees at the gym. <laughs> gym, yeah. With <laughs> like, with gloves with, with your mattress with your floor. with your with your jeans bling. <laughs> like that's what we need. I want to see your solid black shoes with white soles. <laughs> like, oh, all of those things. So, all right. So in fact. In the crate, honestly, it's been a crazy week, <laughs> and a, and it's been it's it's been a painful week for the United States. I, I, it's been fun to do a fun conversation today. I wanted to do a fun conversation where we could, like we can actually in humor and good fun, but the reality is is that our country's in pain. Our hearts go out to people who are struggling mm-hmm. right now. Our hearts are there as well. Like mm-hmm. man, it's yeah, it's it's, it's tough. Brutal. Do good things for people this week. Be nice. Like that stuff yeah. matters. Have some fun with things like great cocktails and going to restaurants and enjoying the people that you love but like treat the people that you don't know like the people that you love like mm-hmm. that's really really matters and so mm. while it's fun to judge people based on their tortilla making ability <laughs> <laughs> or their basil on their pizza uh <laughs> you guys know that like i really have a heart for like there's value in humanity yeah and so mm-hmm. glad everybody's we, around we very much we very much value um, all humans and um, and so we're out there and fighting the good fight so thank you for listening and giving us your time even in the midst of the craziest year of all time 2020 mm-hmm. and uh, we'll see you here in a couple of days bye Thanks everybody for listening.